Good morning, Rich Leads. Welcome back to my channel. So this week we are doing a, another tank build. This isn't a brand new tank. We are just giving one of my animals who very much needs it a makeover on their current enclosure because it looks pitiful, honestly. And that is Sterling. You guys know that I absolutely hate the igloo that is in his tank and he loves it so much. It has been such a long time since I did my ball python care video and I didn't just want to do another ball python care video. So a lot like how I did the bearded dragon setup and bearded dragon cost and bearded dragon feeding guide, I want to do that for ball pythons as well. So today we are starting with how to set up a ball pythons enclosure. Now this is not a rack system. This is just like if you're setting them up in a tank I don't have a rack system so I can't do an example of one of those but this is how you would do it in a tank or like if you do stir light bins anything like that also this isn't gonna be a typical bioactive setup like I usually do I would absolutely love to go bioactive for him but he is so destructive every time I set up his tank he completely destroys it the first night and I'm super worried about doing that because I feel like he's gonna uproot all the plants I don't know guys let me know in the comments if you have a bioactive setup for your ball python and how that's working out for you because I would absolutely love to do it but I am just super nervous about it so let me know down below. Before we get started very quick side note I am going out of town so I'm recording three videos today so in this video and the next two you will see our real monsters with Icus's ears. It is a thousand degrees in this house and the idea of changing my shirt sounds like an actual nightmare and I'm sweating just thinking about doing that. So Icus's ears are here to stay for a few videos. Anyways, let's set up Sterling's tank. So the very first thing that I actually did was built Sterling's hide. And I did this using foam boards from Home Depot and my husband just drew a pattern on it for me. Please ignore the super muddy floors. It was raining this day and the dogs were running in and out. So that's why there's muddy paw prints everywhere. And also this footage is from a vlog a few weeks back, but I felt like it was important to show the entire process of how I built this hide. So that's why you are seeing this again if you watch that vlog. So basically what I'm doing here is just cutting out pieces and we're going to end up stacking all these pieces together and hot gluing them and grouting over it all to make it super sturdy and make it a heavy hide for him and I'm just cutting this with a foam cutter because it makes absolutely no mess it's so much cleaner than trying to use a box cutter or a knife and it's just super fast and it makes everything so much easier so I'm just cutting each piece a little bit bigger than the last just to kind of give it some shape so it's not just straight up and down and then I cut two smaller pieces for the top just to give it a little more shape and then I just start hot gluing all the pieces together I am only hot gluing around the sides and the front I am leaving the back empty basically we are going to take the foam cutter and carve this thing out the foam cutter will cut through the hot glue but it kind of makes a mess so I am just opting out of putting hot glue where I will be cutting and I am also not putting the very top layer onto this because I don't want to risk cutting into that as well so that way I can just cut this entire thing out out and stick the foam piece on top and have a nice closed in hide. And then I just kind of cut out the door and rounded out all of the sharp corners on the inside. Then I'm just hot gluing those top pieces on. And then I am using grout to go over this. The very first time I made a hide, I said that if I did it again, I would not be using this type of grout, but here I am still using this type of grout. I actually really liked the way that it dried. It's super, super solid and hard. The one that I put in Zaz, my bearded dragon's tank, is still super solid. She climbs on it and stuff all the time and not a single piece has ever chipped off, which is absolutely crazy. And once all that dried, I am doing the inside and the side and everything to make sure that I get every inch of this thing coated in grout. I don't want any water getting into the foam and molding or mildewing or anything. And I also want this thing to be super heavy because all pythons are really strong and I don't really want him to be able to move this around the tank. And then I just put it outside so that it could completely dry. Then I start painting. When you paint these things, you want to make sure to use a non-toxic paint. A lot of them will have these little leaf symbols on the bottle showing you that it is non-toxic or it'll just flat out say non-toxic on the back but that is super important make sure you are using non-toxic paint 
And then I get a very, very, very small amount of paint on the brush and just kind of go over and it'll kind of highlight the different curves and stuff in the grout. This whole paint job wasn't my favorite out of all the ones I did, but it'll do. And once that paint dries, we are going to seal this with, again, a non-toxic sealer. This is shellac, and it dries non-toxic and hypoallergenic. You just have to make sure that it dries 100% after you use it. You have to make sure that there's no smell left to it once it dries. And I checked their website, and it says that once it dries, it is safe for animals and humans. On to setting up his tank. This is a 40 gallon breeder. This is actually the tank that he has been in. I just cleaned it out and disinfected everything. This background is from when I very first got Zaz. I got it off Amazon somewhere. I don't know. And I like to black out the sides of my tanks because it makes them feel more secure in this area. And I just do that using black poster board from the Dollar Tree and just normal tape. And you're of course also going to need a heat pad. Again, no idea what kind of heat pad this is. I got it from a Repticon years ago and it has worked absolutely fantastically ever since but I don't know what kind it is. And we are also going to need a thermostat to control the temperature of the heat pad. Heat pads get hot. Maddie Smith, I think it was, did a whole video where she just plugged heat pads into a wall and used a temperature gun to take the heat pad. And they all got over 100 degrees, some getting up to the 140s, which is so crazy. So you need something to maintain that temperature. I am just taping the heat probe down on top of where the heat pad is using black electrical tape. Then you plug the heat pad itself into the thermostat and the thermostat into the wall and you just set the thermostat to whatever you need it to be. I usually set it a little high at about 100 degrees and that's because there's going to be bedding over this and we want them to be able to get that heat through the bedding. Speaking of substrate, I'm going to be using a mixture of Eco Earth, Repti Bark, a little bit of Cypress Mulch, and some Forest Moss. Sterling has a hard time shedding so I want to give him a substrate that is going to encourage his humidity to stay up. Ball pythons do like a little humidity and if you are using a 40 gallon breeder with a screen top that humidity definitely escapes so your options are basically to bump up the humidity to cover the top with something like plexiglass or saran wrap or something like that or you could always opt for PVC cages. I do plan on upgrading him to a PVC cage at some point but as as for right now, this is how we're doing this. And you may not even have to take any kind of precautions for your ball python. My other ball python, Sylvanas, doesn't have any kind of issue shedding at all, and we don't cover the top of her tank at all, and the only thing that we use for substrate for her is Reptivark, so this is kind of on a snake by snake basis. I'm only using a little bit of the Cypress Mulch because it isn't my favorite, especially this brand of Cypress Mulch. There are always giant chunks in this thing, and I don't don't like it so I'm only putting a little bit in there because cypress mulch does help to raise up the humidity and then I'm just going to mix everything up really good and this was the finished consistency of it all it is super soft for him to slither around on I was really happy with it and I think it's gonna do a good job holding in humidity and then I'm just adding his highs and his enrichment, starting out with my favorite hide, this extra large Exoterra hide, the new edition. These are super cool. I have them in both of my ball python enclosures. And then I'm adding the hide that I made for him. It is super important that you give your ball python at least two hides, a hot hide and a cold hide, so that they are able to thermoregulate and digest their food properly. You can also give them a moist hide where you can do something as simple as taking a Tupperware and cutting a hole out of the top and filling it with sphagnum moss. Sterling will not use a moist hide, so when it's time for him to shed, I just put a lot of moss in his hot hide, but they need to have at least two. And a bunch of sticks and branches and things that I got from my local river. They have all been sanitized. I think for these, I had used the oven method. I have a giant pile that I just pull from when I need it, but these were all baked in the oven, except for the super long piece on top. I use the super watered down bleach method of sanitizing that. 
that one. Then I'm adding a bunch of leaves for him to ruffle around in and they also make the enclosure look a lot better in my opinion. Sterling absolutely loves to climb as I have found that most ball pythons do. So I like to give him lots of sticks and things to climb up and around and over. Also gave him a nice and big water bowl. It's actually a dog bowl that I got in the clearance section. And then we're just going to put his screen lid on top. This one kind of goes without saying, just make sure you have some kind of locking lid to go on top of your ball python tank because they can and will escape if you don't. And this is how it turned out. In the end super happy with it i'm sure he will have it destroyed in no time but i'm happy with how it came out for now and then we just add the sterling he's not actually breathing that fast this is sped up footage that is how slow he was moving but he explored his tank for the rest of the night and into the next day he seems super happy with it all which makes me really happy and i forgot to put his thermometer hygrometer in there so i'll leave in the description the one that i use because you'll also need one of those in your tank and in case you're wondering, these are the locks that I use. They were super cheap at Petco and you literally just clip them to the rim of the tank in the lid and it locks it. And I also put a very small LED light on top just to help him differentiate between day and night. Ball pythons don't need any kind of special lighting because they are fully nocturnal creatures, but a small light on top will help them tell the difference between day and night. And this light is waterproof as well, so it can withstand misting. But that's about it guys. I am super happy with how it turns out. I feel like he finally has a enclosure that is on par with everyone else's. So that makes me super happy because he definitely deserves it. But as always guys, if you're not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and Wednesday. This week's Instagram shout out goes to Lori the Leopard Gecko for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. Thank you so much, Lori. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. You will see Iker. What's his name? Ickus. Ickus. Ickuses. 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 Come on, computer. You're so slow. Okay. Ickus.